growing of flowers and ornamentals of floriculture, a subsector of the agriculture industry, is a key economic activity in Kenya. Though barely three decades old, floriculture has contributed largely to opening and improvement of infrastructure in hitherto remote areas, thus aiding transport and communication to millions locally and even entrenching the country in the global markets. According to the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, in 2014, the floriculture subsector exported 136,601 tons, valued at 54.6 billion, compared to 124,858 tons, worth 46.3 billion registered in 2013. Employing directly on the payroll over 100,000 people indirectly such as myself and people who are in packaging industry or in transport industry and others another 500,000 people so you're looking at an industry that provides livelihoods to at least two million people at any one time the sector heavily depends on environmental resources that sometimes can be fragile Hence, the concerns the holders must strive to utilize such resources with due diligence to achieve desirable balance of exploitation and conservation, summarized as sustainable use of such resources. And this is important because the world uh, and we in Kenya should be looking at how we do business. We must do business sustainably, and that means looking after the environment, meeting our social responsibilities, and also doing our growing in uh, a good way. This therefore necessitates the need for the subsector to create a uniform code of conduct to ensure all are reading from the same script. Internationally, without a recognized competent authority, it would be a bit difficult for produce to access a foreign market. Because foreign markets are very concerned about the risks that are associated with trade of plant and plant products. They are also um, concerned about environmental protection of their own territories. And over the years, the industry has learned that it needs tools that can, can stand the challenge, uh, can stand the challenge of interrogation, but also tools that are effective in communication. And one such tool that uh, the industry has found to be very useful over time is the industry code of practice. Flower value chain. Like any other chain, sustainability to all partners involved greatly depends on clear observance of processes and procedures to determine the quality of the product. This starts from the very first stage, breeding. Breeding is an art and a science where you come up with varieties that would uh, suit the customer. Customers have got various uh, needs and we are there to fulfill their demands. People are looking for, the markets are looking for thornless varieties, they are looking for scented varieties, uh, different shades of colors. So, Deruta, we create that flower business. We, we try to work out. We don't do any genetic modification on the flowers, but we use the natural selection process. I travel five times a year to Ethiopia, around three to four times a year I'm in the Netherlands and uh, once in two to three years I will travel to Latin America. The key aspect of market data and analysing the research, bringing it back into our breeding programmes and then allowing us to provide basically niche, up-to-date and good products to our clients. We work with the breeders and ensure that uh, the materials they breed is protected and also because of this office we can be able to access breeders material from all over the world because they'll be sure that their materials will be protected. Osarian Development Company Limited is not only one of Kenya's leading growers and exporters of fresh cut flowers but also the oldest founded in 1982. The company has over 200 hectares under various varieties of flower like roses, carnation and starties. Currently it exports over 400 million stems of roses annually. When we sell our flowers out there, they are not graded as Osirian flowers or for any other farm. They are, great, they are taken as produce of Kenya. So we are looking at having the 
minimum standards such that at least we have a set guideline whereby each farmer, if they meet those minimum standards which are taken care of in the national mechanism, that is, has been developed through collaboration of all the stakeholders, that means we will be able to not only access the market, the markets as a country, but also to be competitive and sustain the production. In terms of pest and diseases management, Osarian has implemented Integrate Pest Management System, IPM, that equally guarantees safety of the workers and the environment. We are using drip irrigation and hydroponics to feed our roses. That means in fatigation, we are giving the plant only what it requires, but anything that is excess or that has not been taken up by the plant is collected back, treated with the geothermal that is sterilized, recycled back to the crop. So it's a closed system such that there is not, no wastage of fertilizer economically, but also the threat to the environment is eliminated because you are maintaining everything. There is no possibility of having something like nitrogen leaching or any other fertilizer, any other element going into the environment where it's not uh, required. This is peppermint that we use as a biological control agent. So in the event you have uh, white flies in your crop, you and already you have you have infection, you put your mint in the in the in the crop, all the white flies will come to the to the mint because it will attract them. From our operations, we have a lot of waste waters. That is uh, what we get from the field. Because when we harvest, all the flowers are put in water. This is water that is treated with a product to kill uh, bacteria. So that water comes into the park house. After you take out the flowers, we need to dispose that water from the washrooms and all the facilities around. So all that water is taken through a constructed wetland, which is what we have here. The wetland is co consists of uh, four, four stages. The first one is a gravel bed. The gravel bed usually consists of uh, plants that utilize toxic forms of ammonia. And the reason for the gravel is to increase the surface area for microbial action. Then we have three day cells. These are the pods. And the pods uh, contain on their side Still plants that will utilize minerals like uh, phosphorus, sulfur in high levels and potassium. But also we have the Nile cabbage or pistia, what you see floating. So that uh, pistia has to be removed on a daily basis such that you maintain a certain percentage of cover. Smallholder participation. Multi-grow investments is a smallholder conglomerate founded in Nyandarwa but operating in seven counties in Kenya. Flowers are not there to be eaten. They are there for beauty, ornamental and decoration. So quality is one of the aspects. And uh, by ensuring that, we have to go uh, on a routine basis round from each farm to the other farm, trying to train our farmers with the help of uh, HCDA and KEFIS, and uh, well, also the county of Nyandarwa, uh, trying to uplift the standards in terms of record keeping of the farmers as well as uh, other areas of pest management and traceability. KEFIS being the competent authority that is recognized under IPPC does um, uh, analysis for maximum residue levels to determine whether this produce exceeds or it's within the limits and therefore uh, this KEFIS works very closely with the Pesticide Control and Products Board uh, so that um, the pesticides that are used in the field are the ones that are recommended and also that the exporters will observe the post-harvest interval. We should we do a seed certification. This ensures that Kenyan farmers can get access to high quality seeds. So we have inspectors distributed in various stations in the country and they inspect the seeds at the farm level. 
and only certified seeds that meet the quality are allowed to be commercialized to the farmers. So in this group, when a farmer ships the flower from here in Nyandarwa to Europe, we are able to trace his products. And that is why we have survived in the Flora Holland market. We are exporting, we are currently exporting flowers. Our annual turnover is 15 million Kenya shillings. And uh, we, uh, by the way things started this year, it means we'll break that record and we might make 25. Wilma Flowers Company is a consolidator collecting flowers from over 3,000 farmers spread across 15 counties in Kenya. We have to engage in the best agricultural practices to ensure that we are able to get good uh, standard uh, of quality that we can deliver to the, to the market. And uh, for that matter, we engage with our team of uh, agronomists that the company has uh, on board to work with the farmers on the, in respective areas of production to spearhead good agricultural practices uh, to ones getting good uh, productivity. And Grading of the produce is done at the collection centers and again at the head office before it is shipped out of the country. The quality specifications are communicated to the farmers at collection centers and it is also indicated in the contract farmers sign with the company. Okay, By the end the of 2015, in, uh, all uh, Wilma uh, Ideal Farmers will have their soil tested to ensure farmers only apply what is needed in time, quantity and quality to guarantee pollution-free environment in quality flower production. Company, we work from uh, market to production approach. That means that we produce what the market wants, not what the production can manage. So we produce as from the market. That one is able to, to take care of uh, any supply that would come from the farms, not to be quote unquote as an oversupply. It needs to get to the market um, um, light time and enough quantities. Also to make the customers on the other side very, um, very happy with our production and uh, to leave, to make them that, uh, be aware that the Kenyan growers are, are organized and uh, they are able to deliver them produce when they need it. All we do in our mandate is to make sure that we have traceability mechanisms. Those traceability mechanisms are meant to oversee the produce through the handlers to the market in form of being sure that the issue of MRLs, that is maximum residue levels, the issue of harmful organisms in the production line, and also the documentation aspect for export. Airflow Kenya is part of the Dutch flower group whose role is to buy from growers and sell to markets in Europe. They also act as a logistics company which receives and exports fresh produce on behalf of farmers and consolidators. Uh, we're based at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport and we have here a facility with 2,500 square meters of cold store and uh, related aspects of the business that allow us to maintain a very tight control on the cool chain which is related directly to the quality of the product getting from the grower to their markets. Um, of particular importance to us is to make sure that when the flowers leave the farm they are packed into refrigerated or insulated trucks. Those trucks are maintained at a cool temperature, normally between 2.5 and uh, 4 degrees. And we want to try and make sure that once the product arrives in, uh, at the airport, at Airflow, that we're able to maintain that. The KS 1758 unites all producers, both members of Kenya Flower Council and non-members. It provides a platform for self-regulation. And therefore, we ventured out to see how we could encourage ourselves to all comply to a single set of rules and, and regulations that could help us speak truly in one voice in terms of growing responsibly. Where there is, there is less government involvement in terms of control and more of self 
regulation, which to me, the KS 1758, tends to bring on board more of self-regulation within the industry. Then for me, it provides a more robust uh, position for the industry to develop and to grow. This is uh, a very good standard and in the right direction because it will ensure that uh, all the players in the value chain comply with the standards, they do their part. And so it will make it easy to trade and to meet the market requirements. It has multiple benefits uh, in terms of market access, uh, making sure that the produce that we send out, send out is of a, a good quality, which is appreciated by the market. Uh, it also gives uh, Kenya a good image uh, in the international market. The code is going through public review, after which it will be adopted as the national standard. It will be launched in July and we're looking forward to working with a very robust code of practice that has provided all the players in the value chain a place to practice the best practices and to be a, a team, if you like. It saves uh, wastage of resources that might otherwise be deployed in policing uh, the industry. It also gives you better remuneration for your product in the market. If all growers comply to the standard, then we can start to develop a brand Kenya as a product uh, and meet the uh, goals of the 2030 vision as far as the Kenya economy is concerned. The role of standardization is to facilitate trade. The role of standardization is to protect the consumers from poor and harmful uh, uh, goods. And the role of standardization is also to protect the, the environment. And we built all those uh, aspects into this particular standard. So 1758 is a big step in order to uh, create a, a level playing field for all exports that leave the country, and particularly uh, floriculture and horticultural exports. <music>